I've got one of my favorite lectures for you today. We're going to talk about the, or I'm going to talk actually, about the history of the periodic table. It's going to be truly exciting. You won't be able to control yourselves as we go through the elements and talk about the symbols and all the characteristics. Oh, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. Now, here's the periodic table. I know you've, been, you've seen it all year long. And hey, now, Mr. Lewis, aren't you going to open the box? Well, it's oh, OK. Yeah, I um, didn't really look. Oh, my gosh. This is from Harry Yateman. You guys have heard me talk about when I was in graduate school in Tennessee, working on my master's degree. And I had a, a teacher by the name of Harry Yateman, and I, I've told some stories about him before. Really, really cool guy. Every once in a while, I get some stuff from him. Whenever Harry sends me something, it's always really pretty neat. So let's take a look at what Harry sent. Wow. Hmm, what's this? That's weird looking. Well, here's the letter. Let's see what Harry has to say. Get rid of that. Dear Bob, he calls me Bob. I always like that so much. I wanted to share with you an amazing discovery we made about four weeks ago in the sewers of Atlanta. The enclosed jar contains some examples of my findings. Oh, wow. Look at that. I wonder what, oh, we better read this and see what it is. Here's some quick background. As you know, I have long been interested in organisms that live in caves and and I don't mind saying that I have developed quite a bit of a national reputation in this area. So I was not surprised when I received a call from the city of Atlanta to come and identify an organism they found in an old section of sewer dating back to the Civil War. Oh, wow. When I arrived, I was quickly taken to the section of collapsed sewer where an organism had been discovered. Imagine my surprise to see millions of these little buggers bobbing up and down in the slop. Oh, yeah, see how they bob up and down? I can see that. Oh. I think we have found a new species. It appears to be related to the common head louse, Pediculus capitus. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right, but it is really different in a lot of interesting ways. For one thing, we don't know yet where these, how these guys got trapped in this section of the sewer pipe, or how long they have been isolated there, or why they were the only life form found in the water. We do know that these lice are about 100 times larger than Particulus capitus, and they cannot walk at all. Yeah, they are pretty big. I don't know if you guys have ever had head lice, but they're pretty tiny. These guys are huge. And wow. Look at those guys bounce up and down. That's yeah, really neat. Through the years, living in the water exclusively, their legs have become vestigial. The legs have developed into modified swimming apparatuses. We, we wave them, they wave them around and rise and submerge and move through the water. I am thinking of naming them Particulus Gigantus. Harry's really cool. I gotta tell you, his, his big thing when I was there in school, was he did stuff with copepods in the ocean. He named copepods after his wife and his kids. So like it, his wife's name was Jeannie, so he called one of the copepods Jeannie Yateman Iliadis or something like that. It was just really cool. And, you know, to just listen to this guy talk about all this stuff. And he always said he found a bunch of new cave organisms, but this one really looks kind of fascinating. You know, if I look in here really closely, I think I can see their feet wiggling around, or those little vestigial feet wiggling around and making a move. Golly. Oh, look at that one go up right there. Is that cool? Gets up to the top. I think they probably breathe when they reach at the top. Let's see what else he has to say. The most interesting find is the fact that they aren't parasitic anymore. They don't digest blood. The digestive systems have changed radically. These guys have developed the ability to eat sewage and thrive on it, and they eat a lot of it. All they do is eat, swim, breathe, and eat some more. You must do one other thing or there wouldn't be very many of them. Um, we aren't exactly sure how they breathe because they don't spend much time at the surface to absorb oxygen, but they may absorb oxygen through their pores. Maybe they have a mouth, maybe they are mouth breathers. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. You can't really see 
what they're doing. Eh, I'll take a look. What our tests have shown is that these little critters can eat enough pollutants to purify the water to drinking standards. It still looks cloudy, but by the time this gets to you, the sewer water they were in should be drinkable. Go ahead and try some. Huh? I'm not even sure I want to take the lid off. Doesn't smell bad. What do you think? I don't know. Uh, you guys want to try this? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's not bad. It's got a little bit of an aftertaste, but the aftertaste isn't all that bad. Hmm, how about that? Let's see what else Harry has to say here. Go ahead and try some. The little guys give the water a fruity flavor. Oh, that's what that aftertaste was. Think about what this could, could mean to sewage treatment. If they can breed these guys in large numbers, well, there's no telling the uses that they can be put to. Yeah, since, since the guys have... Let's see, since the guys I sent you have eaten, I don't read very well, since the guys I have sent you have eaten all the sewage, be sure to feed them well, and they'll eat just about anything, he says. If any of them are dead, try eating a few. If any of them are dead, try eating a few. Um, well, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell whether they're not, um, if they have, let's see. They are high in protein and really don't taste anything like chicken. Sounds like Harry. Well, let's see if I can get one of these guys out of here. Ah, whoop, got away from me. Hmm. Come on, come on up, guy. Get one of these guys to the surface and maybe I can get one out. Maybe I'll put one in. Let me try. I'll tell you what, I'll pour some of this liquid off. And see if I can grab one of these guys out of here. Let me get one of these guys. All right. Oh, I got one. Oh, I can kind of feel it wiggling. Oh, I've tickled my tongue. No, they're not bad. That's pretty cool. They are high in protein, but they don't taste like chicken. I just thought you would like to be on the cutting edge of this, and you might enjoy Enjoy sharing it with your students and colleagues. That's the sewer lights demonstration. I like to do this very early in the school year, sometimes on the first day, never in more than one class. I like to get one of our custodians to come in with a package and set it on the tabletop, get my students to take a look at it. We start out our chemistry course by talking about observation, inference, and interpretation. Set this thing up, bring it in, get my students to look at it, eat a few sewer lice. I would pass it out in the classroom. I would walk around, I'd be holding the jar up in their faces, I'd be having them look at the sewer lice jumping up and down inside the jar. I would, have, I would be pointing at it going, oh look, can you see their mouth opening? Do you see those little feet going? Get really excited about it. When I've done this for the last 25 years or so, kids go right along with me. And they get almost physically sick when I eat the sewer lice and when I drink a little bit of the water. It's up to you whether or not you tell them what it is. I guess it's up to me now to tell, decide whether or not I want to tell you what it is. In this case, We've got a little Mountain Dew in here and some raisins. The raisins pick up the carbonation as they sit on the bottom from the Mountain Dew. Carb the bubbles stick to the raisins. And as the more bubbles get, to get on the side of the raisin, they get lighter. Their density gets a little bit less than waters. They lift up to the surface. When they hit the surface, the bubbles break. Their mass increases, their density increases, if you will, because their mass doesn't really increase. And then they fall back down to the bottom. They pick up some more bubbles, they pop to the surface, they fall back down. They'll do that for quite a while. They'll bounce up, they'll go back down, they'll bounce up, they'll go back down. They really do 
look like they're alive. I personally would never tell my students what these things are. I have had parents come to parents' night and say things like, we heard you ate sewer lice. And I go, yeah, I did. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to talk to them about it. But it is a great observation thing. It's a great thing to hook your students into. It's a great way to get them asking questions and to get them started on this idea of, you know what? Something strange is going to happen in that class every day. I want to be there. 